Hello, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Kathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me for this video. So in this video, I'm going to be popping on every day this week and talking all about what I'm wearing for my handmade wardrobe. So every day I'm planning on popping on and talking about the pattern I'm wearing and the fabric, how it was to sew, all that sort of thing. And I'm sort of loosely doing this video related to Me Made May which is happening over on Instagram this month. And I made a sort of fairly relaxed pledge just to try and wear a piece of handmade clothing every day in May. I generally do wear handmade clothing, something handmade at least, every day anyway, but I thought for May I'll be a bit more sort of conscious about what I'm picking and trying to pick a real variety, a mix of old and new and different types of garments. So that is what I, I've been trying to do. So I thought this week, I will pop on and share with you what I've been choosing. So today is Monday and I thought I'd share with you what I've been wearing since Saturday. So I do a full week through to Friday. So I'm going to start off with what I was wearing on Saturday. Um, I won't be wearing it, but I've got the garment, I've got a photo, I've got the patterns to talk about. Um, and then, yeah, I'll be popping on um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday too, all being well this week and talking all about, yeah, what I've chosen for my handmade wardrobe. And actually the weather's starting to warm up a bit here, so I'm hoping to get some more summery garments out this week too, fingers crossed. But so yeah, I'll kick off with Saturday, um, two days ago, and I can't even remember what I was doing on Saturday. I did have an idea, I might pop on and film a bit then, but sometimes the weekends get so busy. We, oh yeah, we had a party and um, adults were invited as well as the children, it turned into quite a big long party event which is really nice um yeah it was a busy day busy weekend but on saturday i decided to wear a dress i hadn't got out for a while and it is one of my older makes and i made it using this pattern here pattern i really love which is the darling ranges dress pattern by megan nielsen so it's quite a popular pattern this one i think and i can see why because it's a really nice classic shirt dress um, and really wearable perfect that kind of in between weather I guess. It's got this sort of v-neck and a full button down front. It's got these sort of above the elbow sleeves with an elastic cuff and then a gathered skirt attached and pockets. And you can add on um, waist ties at the back. You've probably seen this little picture here. Oh, it's quite not really focusing very well. You can add on a little waist ties at the back to sort of cinch it in a little bit. And the pattern also comes with a couple of other variations, a little blouse which I think is really pretty actually and I should really try that sometime with short sleeves and then this more loose fitting dress I haven't must admit I haven't seen many of this version um, about I've mainly seen people making this version here that's kind of the classic darling ranges dress I'd say and um, I've got a really old version of this pattern actually so my sizing goes from extra small to extra large but these days Megan Nielsen has a much broader size range there are two size bands there is um, a size 0 to 20 US sizing and then her curve range which is I think a size 14 up to 30. And the Darling range is available in that full size range. I really love this pattern. I think I've made two versions of the Darling Ranges dress to date and this Saturday I wore my first version I made. I've got it down here. So here is my first version of the Darling Ranges dress I made quite a long time ago now. So you can see it's got this cute little elasticated cuff, it's got the button down front, the gathered skirt, and you can probably see better on here the waist ties. They're kind of a bit different because you sort of sew them onto the back of the skirt with a little kind of cross on the back and pull them in there rather than attaching them to the side seams. And actually for my second version of this dress, I did instead switch the um, waist ties and attach them to the side seams instead, just because I think I prefer that. It does give a little bit more space to sink it in cinch it in not sink it in um cinch it in as well but um it does work fine here and i guess it's quite a pretty little feature um with the waist ties attached in the back like that a bit different but yeah this is my first version i made and i made it in this really beautiful chambray fabric i think the model on the pattern's wearing a chambray and i do think the dali ranges look so nice in a chambray um and this chambray is an art gallery chambray that I got from Minerva and I had a check actually just before I came on here to film and this fabric is still in stock on Minerva so I'll link it down below. It is such a lovely chambray fabric, it's got this sort of deep blue to it and then these really pretty florals on it in like a sort of really minty pale green and a lovely soft pink and a white. I think they're really cute and I love 
oh it's kind of most of the chambray colour with that detail on there and when I added on as you can see I had a bit of fun with the buttons I added on these little pink flower buttons that I thought tied in quite well with the prints so yeah that is my first Darling Ranges dress and in terms of sizing on this one because I've got the older style pattern I went for the smallest size that was available on this pattern which is extra small and I think I grabbed one of my other newer Megan Nielsen patterns actually so I could compare the size range I think the extra small now um, equates to the size 4 on the newer size range and it's designed for bust 34, waist 26 and hips 36 and I am bust 32, waist 26, hips 36 so it looked like it would be right for me on the waist and hips maybe a little bit big on the bust but what I did for this first version actually because this fabric um, it's a little bit pricey and it was a new pattern and I wasn't sure about the fit around the sort of bodice area. I remember making a twirl just at the bodice to check the fit there and I did make a few adjustments before I cut into my um, art gallery chambre. I remember I made a slight broad shoulder adjustment because it felt a bit tight around the shoulders and I can't remember if I made any other adjustments to this one. It's such a long time ago but I would definitely recommend on a pattern like this making a sort of twirl of the bust just to check it particularly if you're going to cut then into some quite nice fabric you don't want to spoil and I think I don't think I end up taking in too much of the sides actually because I think I quite like the fact that I can just pull it in a little bit with the waist ties um so I don't think it felt too big around the bodice from memory it was mainly just that tightness around the shoulders I think but I was glad I did that so I could have a tweak with it before I cut into this fabric and made my proper version but I put up a picture of me wearing this one it was perfect for the weather on Saturday because it was one of those days where it was sunny but not really warm um, and I just think it's quite a pretty fabric and a pretty shirt dress pattern so yeah I really enjoyed wearing that one on Saturday so that's what I was wearing on Saturday and then I'll move on to Sunday and Sunday was another busy day um, we went to church, we went on a bike ride, my son had a party so we were go 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 and I wanted something that would be quite practical and comfy particularly for going out on a bike ride so I decided to get out another really old make actually I've got this one on the floor so I'll grab it now and I'll grab the pattern too so what I wore on Saturday on Sunday sorry was a jersey dress I made using this pattern here which is the McCall's M7561 and if you've been watching my channel for a while you know I don't often use big four patterns I mainly stick to the indie patterns but this was actually one of the first patterns I ever sewed when I was really, really, really new at sewing. I think it might have been my first garment I actually tried to make. I don't know why I started with a jersey garment before a woven garment. Probably because I was totally new and I didn't really know <laughs> what I was doing. So I thought I'd just give it a go. But it's a lovely pattern, actually. Um, it's a jersey dress pattern with lots of different variations built in. I do like how with a lot of the big four patterns, you get so many different versions included. So you can see it's a jersey dress pattern with a gathered skirt which you can either make as a sort of above, above the knee length or a sort of full length and then there are loads of different variations on the bodice too you can make a kind of jersey top with more of a sort of boat neck or um you, and it's got this cool sort of scooped back you can do which i've never done but i would like to try or you can make it with more of a scoop neck and it's got different sleeve lengths too sleeveless um sort of short elbow length short sleeve so loads of variations built in it doesn't have an amazing size range. It goes from an extra small up to an extra, extra large. And the largest size is for a bust of 46 to 48 inches. But yeah, it's a really nice pattern, actually. And I really love wearing my um, M7561 dresses. I've got probably two or three of them. I haven't made one for a while, though. But this is one of my very early versions I made. It's quite a simple little dress, um, as you can see in this blue jersey fabric. And I actually made this one out of a jersey bed sheet because um, I was so new to sewing and really nervous about cutting into proper fabric. And I had this, I think it was like a double um, sized jersey bed sheet, so plenty of fabric in it. So I thought I'd cut it up and just use it as a bit of a twirl. And actually it came out okay. There was quite a lot of, I think, um, tweaking this one to get it right. But I think it's one of those ones where on the outside it looks quite neat, on the inside it's a bit messy. But yeah, for my version, um, I chose the scoop neck option, as you can see, and the short sleeve, and then it's got the elasticated waist. And I think with the skirt, I might have shortened it a little bit from the pattern pieces, because it's more of a mini skirt on me than a sort of above the knee length skirt. 
And in terms of sizing, I can't remember which size I actually went for on this one because um, it was such a long time ago and I think I've just adjusted the pattern pieces so much now they've probably changed a bit for the original sizes anyway. It was either the extra small or the small. The small is closer to my measurements but I'm not sure at that early stage in my sewing journey I'd have trusted myself to go with my measurements anyway so um, I'm not altogether sure on this one. But I have tweaked it quite a lot along the way. I think I've probably taken the side seams a bit just gradually as I've tried it on and that sort of thing. Um, but it's just a really nice, comfy, relaxed dress to wear. One funny thing about this pattern is the way the neckline's finished. You don't add a neckband. You pretty much just turn under the, ne um, the fabric and sew it in place. And I was quite lucky, I think, on this early version. It didn't stretch the neckband out too much. And it actually sits quite flat and there's no gaping when I wear it. But I think I did um, try again on a later version to do the same method and I remember ending up stretching my fabric quite a lot and having to recut the bodice on that one so I think on a more recent version I decided just to add a neckband rather than risking that method again but yeah it is a really comfy dress and I particularly like how the waist is finished you sort of gather um, the fabric in for the skirt and sew it to the top with quite a wide seam and then you sew another line of stitching and leave a gap to make a channel to add elastic in so the skirt isn't just brought in at the waist by the sort of elasticity of the stretch fabric itself there's a channel of elastic there too which really brings in and makes it hug your waist which I, I quite like actually I think it gives a nice shape to this dress and it's one of those dresses that when I made I wasn't sure if I'd really wear it it was kind of like a toile and I thought if it ends up being a wearable toile that's a bonus but actually I really like this dress and I've reached for it more than I expected over the years. It's getting a bit bobbly now because it's quite old, but it's perfect for going on a bike ride. We went for a bike ride through the woods. I didn't have to worry about if it got messy or anything like that. And because it's Jersey, it's so comfy. I always think with like a fabric that's delicate, like a viscose, I wouldn't want to wear it on my bike. Cause you know, when you sit on the seat and you lean forwards and it kind of stretches a bit here and I would be worried about sort of ripping a seam on like a dress with a delicate fabric. But I love this one's nice and easy to wear. And I can do anything in it um, and because it's this nice plain sort of marley navy blue colour it goes quite nicely with other things in my wardrobe too. I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on and on um, that Sunday I had it on with a pair of leggings because it was a bit chilly and I also just wore it with a pink cardigan it's a ready to wear cardigan I've had for years but I thought it looked quite nice with a soft pink cardigan so yeah it's a nice dress it's a nice pattern um, I've pretty much mainly made the scoop neck short sleeve version just because I love it but I do think I should try other versions I particularly like the other steep back option I might try that one day um, but yeah that was what I was wearing on Sunday so that brings me up to today and today I'm wearing a newer make actually it's one I just finished I think last month and you can't see it on me because on top I'm wearing an older um, ready to wear t-shirt but I've paired this t-shirt with a handmade skirt that I made last month and this is my first time actually wearing it but the weather is quite mild today so I thought it'd be a good time to wear because I've kind of been looking forward to getting it on and it's a skirt I made using this pattern here the Maeve skirt sewing pattern by True Bias which is a pattern I've been admiring for a while and then I got it for Christmas and I've sewn two versions this year which are both quite different to each other but I really love them both but I'll show you the line drawings so it's quite a simple skirt pattern for a woven skirt, gathered skirt with an elasticated waist. And you can add these optional drawstring ties at the front and it's got pockets. And what's cool about this pattern is it's a bit of a mix and match pattern. You can kind of make any length skirt you want and with different numbers of tiers. There are loads of different options built in, more than just you can see on the back here. So you can make quite a lot of different skirts using this pattern. I think they'd, yeah, it could all be quite varied. And it sews up really nicely. It's quite a simple sew too. I think does True Bias describe it as one and a half out of five difficulty. Um, and it's got a good size range. I've got the zero to 18 US size range version. And I think there's also a 14 to 30 size range too. But yeah, um, the version I'm wearing today is a bit of a hack of this skirt actually. Basically this hack is one that True Bias has a tutorial for and I followed that tutorial to essentially make it into like a midi length skirt with just one tier with a curved hem so it sort of dips down at the front and at the back and then comes up at the sides. I'll put up a picture of this skirt so you can see 
um, what I mean um, about the curved hem. I think it's really pretty and when I got this pattern I knew I wanted to try that hack because I'd seen it um, I think maybe from last summer and I just thought it looked a bit fun and a bit of a different um, hemline to what I had already in my wardrobe. So I'll stand up a bit so you can see the lovely print on this skirt. And I, I've added in the um, optional waist ties, as you can see, I've just uh, undone them there. This fabric is a viscose by Minerva. It's one of their Minerva exclusive viscose chalet fabrics. They've got a huge range um, and this one's gifted to me in exchange for a post which I've written which is up on the Minerva website. I'll link this fabric and I'll link the post too in case you fancy having a read. I just talk in a bit more detail about how I got on with sewing with the fabric and how I did the um, curved hem hack and all that sort of thing. I mean, it's a really lovely fabric. I love all the colours in it um, and I love how it's got a black base so it works really well paired with like a black top too. Um, and it's just really nice and comfy to wear and I've really enjoyed swishing around in this one this morning. In terms of sizing, I made a size US size 4, which is designed for a waist of 28 inches and hips of 36 inches. So I went with my hip measurement on this one because I wanted there to be plenty of room at the hips. And I didn't bother grading to a smaller size for the waist. I just um, shortened the piece of elastic that I used around the waist. So it's end up a little bit more gathered at the waist than I guess it technically should be if I'd have gone for my right size. But I don't really mind that. I quite like the gathering effect around the waist. I'll show you how gathered it looks. I'll stand up. Um, it doesn't feel too bulky around the waist and I guess it's quite a lightweight viscose. So probably sizing up um, one size in the waist hasn't made too much difference there. But it's actually really comfy to wear with the elastic waist. I quite like the length of it. Um, it goes up a little high at the sides with the curved hem, but it's yeah, more of a midi length skirt, which I'm really enjoying that style of at the moment. And I'll put a picture up now of um, what it looks like on today with this t-shirt. Um, it's just really comfy to wear and I'm just really enjoying having this one on actually. I like trying to get a mixture of old and new makes out and I have been, yeah, very keen to get this one on and other weather's a bit warmer. So that's what I'm wearing today. So in a moment I'm going to head off. I've got a few jobs I need to get done around the house this morning and I've got one sewing task I need to tackle today too, which is something I need to do for my son. So it's getting to that time of year where the weather's warming up and he wants to wear shorts to school rather than trousers. So we dug out his um, school uniform shorts from last year and we discovered they have a type of waistband that he's not finding so comfy these days. I think he found them okay last year, but yeah, he's just not finding this type of waistband comfortable anymore. It's an adjustable waistband. This is the style of waistband. These are his shorts from last year. It's got this little elastic at the side and you can kind of hook it around a button to get the sort of right width around the waist which I think is quite a nifty way to adjust the waist and make sure that you can kind of get the right length and then bring in the waist to just the right size. But he's been finding more recently that he hasn't liked this button and the feel of it. I think maybe a couple of times his polo shirt has sort of slipped out and the button sort of bothered his skin a little bit and been feeling like it's been digging in a bit. So he wasn't very keen to wear these shorts anymore. And he's got a couple of pairs of school trousers that have just a simple elasticated waist that just fit him quite nicely around the waist. So I said I would um, chop off one of these pairs of trousers and turn them into shorts um, just so you can have something a bit more comfy for him. And I think we'll have probably hand these shorts on to another owner who might find that waistband OK because they're still in quite nice condition, actually. Um, so, yeah, my plan is just to sort of use these old shorts, which still fit him quite nicely um, for the length. And I'm going to chop these new uh, newer trousers off, to turn them into a pair of shorts so he can get wearing his shorts this week and feel more comfy around the waist. So... That is my plan. It's a bit of a boring sewing task, but I am glad that I can sew and I feel comfortable to be able to do that because it's nice to know I can kind of solve the problem straight away for him to make them a little bit more comfy at school. So that is my plan. I need to go and um, yeah, get that sorted in a moment too. So I'll finish off here today and I'll see you again tomorrow for Tuesday. So yeah, see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Tuesday morning now. It's about 11 o'clock and I've just got back from being out this morning. I went on the school run as usual, dropped the children off at school and then I walked up into town to run a few errands. And it's a lovely day out there today actually. It was a bit chilly first thing so I went off on the school run with my denim jacket on. But actually by the time I started walking into town the sun had come out, I took my denim jacket off and just enjoyed wearing my handmade dress and having a lovely walk in the sun. So yeah, really nice day today. 
So today I've got on a dress I haven't had on in, since last summer and it's really nice to get it out again today. It's a pattern I really love and it's quite an old one this dress but I still love it. And the pattern I used to make this one is this pattern here. It is the honeycomb shirt and dress pattern by Kokowara Crafts. And I do love a shirt dress pattern. I especially love a shirt dress pattern that has some pretty or interesting details to it. And the honeycomb um, dress really does. I'll show you the line drawings. You might have seen them before, but I think there are some really pretty details um, on this one. So you can make it as a shirt or a dress. And it's got this panelled bodice with a button down front and a band collar. And at the back, it's got a yoke. And I remember when I made my first version of the honeycomb dress, it was my first time sewing a yoke using the burrito method and I found the Kokowara Crafts instructions really nice and clear and it took me through the whole process of the burrito method really nicely. I do find they have nice clear instructions. And then the really pretty feature on the bodice of this pattern is these little ties. You sort of sew them into the bodice panels and then you have one tie on each side to cinch in around the waist and they sort of end up with little bows on each side which I think is a really pretty detail and a bit different. Yeah, I love that feature. And then it's got a gathered skirt um, with pockets, or you can make a little peplum to the top. And then there are three sleeve length options, a short sleeve or this long sleeve that has this pretty little bow detail on the cuffs or the sleeveless. And I particularly like the sleeveless honeycomb dress, this version here. I've made a couple of versions of it. And I think this is my first version I made, I think. What's my other one? I can't remember, I made two in quite quick succession and I love getting them out in summer. So the version I'm wearing today, as you can see, is the sleeveless version. It's got the band collar. Um, I added on little wooden buttons, a little flower shapes. I thought they went quite nicely with this fabric. I'll stand up a bit so you can see them. And also I'll stand up a bit so you can see the lovely ties at the sides of the waist too. I think it's a really nice way of cinching the waist in. And the fabric I made this version in is um, quite an old Atelier Brunette fabric. I don't think they make this one anymore. It's this lovely blue colour with these sort of abstract birds on it. I think it was called Bye Bye Birdie. I think I got it from Minerva, but it was a few years ago and I don't think they stock it anymore. I think it is yeah, out of print now. And this fabric is a cotton cambric fabric. And I remember when I, when I saw this fabric, I really liked the look of it, but I didn't know what a cotton cambric was, so I went and had a little research online. And basically it's quite a lightweight cotton fabric. It's quite similar to a cotton lawn. It's got quite a smooth finish, although maybe not quite as silky as a cotton lawn. It feels maybe a little bit softer and possibly slightly more lightweight maybe. This fabric is a little bit sheer, but I think the gathering means I haven't needed to wear a slip underneath it. It isn't too sheer. Um, and it might have just softened actually with wash um because i've washed it quite a few times worn it and washed it quite a lot but yeah, it's a lovely fabric actually and because it's a cotton it still holds the sort of structure and shape of the bodice paneling as well i have made one version of the honeycomb dress in a viscose twill i didn't find it worked quite as well with this pattern just because the viscose twill was quite drapey and floppy so i didn't feel it held the shape of the bodice as well as a cotton does but yeah, I really love this fabric. I think it's really pretty and I do love like a navy um, blue colour. So yeah, that's the fabric I made my version in. And then in terms of sizing, the honeycomb dress has a really good size range. There are two um, categories or size bands. The first one is drafted for a B cup and it goes from UK 6 up to UK 24. And then there's a D cup um, version that goes from UK 18 up to UK 36. And I think the pattern's designed to be a little bit oversized. And when I've made my versions, I've sized down slightly. So I've made my versions always in the UK 6. That is designed for bust 31 inches, waist 23 inches and hips 31 inches. And I'm 32, 26, 36. So an inch larger on the bust and then quite a bit larger on the waist and the hips. I think my waist would put me in between the UK 8 and the UK 10. And my hips would put me in between the UK 10 and the UK 12. But the finished garment measurements are included in this pattern and they show there's quite a lot of ease. So the UK 6 hips measurement is 43 inches and there is loads of room actually around the hips and quite a lot of room around the waist too. I have sort of gathered it in a fair bit with these ties. So I've always been okay sizing down. I didn't really want it oversized. I wanted it kind of fit, fitting me fairly neatly. And I really like the fit of it actually. 
and it's a really nice comfy one to wear and um, the armholes are finished with bias binding which is a really nice finish it's nice and loose and breezy and the weather is a bit muggy today so it's been a perfect dress to wear with it feeling a little bit close outside and i think the only adjustment i made from memory was to shorten the skirt slightly just to bring it a little bit more above the knee i think it's sort of drafted maybe to be around knee length or just above the knee and i've just brought it a little bit shorter so i'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on as i mentioned i did start the day off with a denim jacket on top but now it's nice and warm so i'm really enjoying having this dress out i think it's a really pretty one i have got one other version exactly the same sleeveless in a sort of red with like a really big floral print on and i love that version too but that version does feel very summery so i think i'll leave that until it gets even a bit hotter and warmer here before I get that one out. But I love them both. I think it's a really nice pattern. So anyway, I better finish up here, go and get on with a few jobs. So I'll leave you here and I'll see you again for Wednesday tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Wednesday morning here now. And it's another lovely sunny day outside, which is really nice. I'm really enjoying reaching from some of my more summery garments in my wardrobe and getting out those summery prints. And today I've got another dress on. This is one I think I made a couple of years ago. I haven't had it out this year yet, obviously. The weather's been a bit cold, so I'm really enjoying wearing it today. And it's a dress I made using this pattern here, which is the Stevie Top and Dress Pattern by Tilling the Buttons. So it's one of Tilling the Buttons' older patterns. It's one of their sewing patterns for beginners. You can see mine's quite well loved. I've had to sort of, it's got lots of sellotape all around it, because I've used it quite a bit, this one. I've made a few Stevie Tops and a few Stevie Dresses. And I think this pattern was the first pattern I tried um, in a viscose fabric. It was my first time sewing with viscose. I made a Stevie top. And I remember thinking the viscose fabric was quite tricky to work with when I was new to sewing with it. It being quite slippery and drapey. But the Stevie pattern was nice and clear and easy, which meant it made sewing with viscose for the first time a bit easier. Um, but yeah, I'll show you the line drawing so you can see what it looks like. So it's a top and dress that's designed to be quite loose fitting and it's got this yoke at the back which is split in two and you secure it at the top either by adding on a little button and loop or by a little tie. I've got a tie on my version today. So you can basically pull this one dress or top over your head and just secure it at the back there. It's got little um, sleeve cuffs you can add, an optional patch pocket and the dress is kind of like a shift dress style. Just really easy to wear and yeah it sews up really nicely and it's got a really good size range on this pattern now because tilling the buttons have extended the size range on it so it's now available in a uk6 up to a uk34 which takes you up to a bust of 60 inches and i think you can also buy an add-on for this pattern too to turn it into a dress with a gathered skirt um yeah i think that you crop the dress up crop the dress off or crop the top off and add on a gathered skirt and that looks really nice too I haven't got that add-on, but it does look like a really nice add-on as well. But yeah, this is what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing the dress version. And um, I made this version in a really pretty woven viscose fabric that came from Self Made. And they do stock lovely woven viscose fabrics. I bought a few from them. They're really nice quality. I had a look on the website, actually, just before I came on here to see if this print is still in stock. And it was showing on the website, so I thought maybe it's in stock when I clicked on it, it said out of stock, which is a real shame because I just love this print. I think it's so pretty and summery. It's got this um, royal blue base to the fabric, which is actually a bit brighter in real life than I think it's coming out on the camera. And then it's covered in all these really pretty different types of flowers. They all have white petals. Some have got little orangey yellow middles. There's a few little um, pops of green in there too. I just think it's a really dreamy, pretty floral print. And when I got this fabric, I thought that the Stevie dress would be perfect for it because it's got quite a simple shape to it, so it can really show off this print. So yeah, my version today, I've got the little cuffs on, I've got the um, tie at the back, and I actually also made a little tie to be able to cinch in this dress around the waist, which is how I'm wearing it today. I'll stand up a bit so you can see how that looks. I really like um, how it looks and with that waist tie to cinch it in. Um, I do sometimes wear this dress without the waist tie too, just as a sort of straight shift dress. And I find um, that is perfect for when the weather's really hot and you want something really loose and billowy on. But yeah, I quite like it fastened around the waist and today I've got it on with a pair of leggings. So I'm wearing it a bit like a tunic. And in terms of sizing, 
when I've made this Stevie, I've always sized down. Um, my measurements would put me pretty much as a size eight, but I've sized down one size to a size six. Um, the reason being, I think this is designed to be a bit oversized and loose fitting, this dress. And I thought if I made it in my size, it might end up feeling a bit too big on me, um, a bit like a potato sack maybe. That was my worry before I first made my first version. So I sized down and I quite like the fit actually. I still find it's fairly loose. It's not too tight on the hips or anything. So sizing down seems to have gone okay and I've just stuck with that since making my first version. Um, and it's just really nice and comfy and easy to wear. I like how the sleeves are nice and loose. Um, and yeah, I do love how the stevie is so simple so it can really showcase a pretty print. So yeah, I'm enjoying that the weather's warm enough to have got this one on today. So that's what I'm wearing. And then I was gonna mention tomorrow, I realized um, I've got actually a day out tomorrow. My husband's and I, it's our wedding anniversary um, this month. And so we're going to the spa tomorrow to have a day at the spa together. Um, which is really exciting. We're just going while the children are in school, so we're back, we're back to collect them for school time. So it'll be a short spa trip, but I'm really looking forward to it. It means it might be a bit tricky for me to pop on tomorrow, but I'm planning on wearing a piece of handmade swimwear tomorrow at the spa. So I'll try and get a picture. Then I'll be back on on Friday and I can share with you what I wore to the spa and also what I'm wearing on Friday. So that is my plan. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that tomorrow. It'll be a nice treat. So I'll see you again um, on Friday. So yeah, see you Friday. Bye. Hello, it's Friday morning here now. So it's the final day of this week of my handmade wardrobe. And it's another really lovely sunny day outside today. So yeah, we've been really lucky with the weather this week here. I think the sun has shone pretty much every day. It's been really warm and it's been really nice to have a chance to pull out some garments from my wardrobe that I haven't seen since last summer get out some sort of brighter summery prints and yes, yeah, summery patterns. So yesterday, like I mentioned, my husband and I went off to the spa and we had a really nice day there. It was beautiful weather and they have an outside sort of spa garden. So we were able to have a little sit in an outdoor hot tub um, earlier in the day before it got a bit hot. And then we had a leisurely lunch. Um, we did a couple of saunas and that sort of thing. I spent a bit of time reading my book on a sun lounger, which was nice, went for a swim. So yeah, it was a really nice day. And I managed to get a picture of what I was wearing at the spa, my handmade swimwear. And I also took a picture of what I wore to the spa as well. Whenever I go to the spa, which isn't very often, but whenever I do, um, I like to wear some loungewear to go there just because it's nice and comfy, particularly afterwards when I've had a shower and got, want to get changed back into something nice and easy to pop on. So I'll put a picture up of what I wore to the spa. And I wore handmade t-shirt and handmade joggers. The joggers are the True Bias Hudson Pants pattern. They're my favorite joggers pattern. I find them really comfy and I really like the shape of them with them being kind of like a slim leg fit. Um, I quite like that shape. Um, so yeah, they, the pair I'm wearing there are just an old pair I made quite a long time ago in a navy French terry fabric that I got from Minerva. They're just really nice and basic. I find they go with everything. As you can see, I added on a little white um, cord, which I quite like. I think that goes quite nicely with the navy. And then the top um, I'm wearing is an Agnes tee by Tilling the Buttons. I basically just crop the sleeves off to turn it into a t-shirt and it's got the nice scoop neck. And that again is in a fabric from Minerva. It's a cotton jersey fabric. I'll link both fabrics down below. But it was just a nice, really comfy, um, easy to wear outfit. Um, so that was my outfit to go to the spa and then at the spa I decided to wear one of my handmade bikinis. It's a bikini pattern that I really like. I find it really comfy to wear and I think it's a really nice one to sew up to. I think it's my favourite bikini pattern to sew up actually because the instructions are so good and it just comes together really well. And it's this pattern here which is the Friday Pattern Co Vanessa two-piece um, bikini pattern. I'll show you the line drawings. So it's for this um, fairly simple bikini pant bottom um, with a little waistband and it's kind of like a mid-rise I guess but I like to lengthen mine to make them a little bit more high rise to bring them up closer to my belly button I prefer that sort of um, height which is quite an easy adjustment to make and then the top is a bikini top that is kind of got a fair amount of coverage I think except at the front it's quite a deep plunge there and it's tied at the front with this little tie which I think is quite a cute feature and the top is um, lined, which is nice. 
Um, in terms of the size range on this one, I've got the paper pattern, which goes from an extra small up to a 2XL. But actually, on the website, there's a slightly larger size range available in PDF, which goes up to a 4XL, um, which is designed for a bust of 54 inches. And I find the sizing on the Vanessa 2 piece to come up pretty true to size. I always make the size extra small for the bikini top and then a size small for the bikini bottoms. And that is based on my measurements. My bust would put me as a size extra small and my waist and hips both fall into the small category. But I just find this one sews up really nicely. And I'll put up a picture so you can see um, the two piece I wore at the spa yesterday. I did a sort of mix and match. I wore a plain black bottom and the top is um, black but with the prints on it. And I've got the top here so I can show you the prints a little bit more closely. Um, this is some fabric I had left over from making another swimsuit. I originally used this fabric to make a Pilates swimsuit by Opian and then had enough left over to just about squeeze out this top. Um, so yeah, here it is. It's a really cute fabric. I think this one is a Liberty swim fabric. I think it originally came from System in Tarka quite a long time ago. I think I remember asking for it as a present for Christmas because it's a bit pricey, although I didn't need too much because, yeah, I don't think swimmer ends up taking too much fabric. But yeah, it's really cute. It's got this black base with these little scribbles on and lots of different um, fun colours. So yeah, this is my little top. You can see it's got the little ties at the front there. Oh yeah, and I didn't have quite enough fabric actually on this one for the inside, so I ended up using um, some navy swimmer fabric I had left over from another um, swimsuit just for the back piece and um, I had to use the actual fabric for both sides on the front piece because it's got these ties and if I'd have put the navy on one side of the tie you'd have seen it when it was tied up but for the back I was able to use this navy and no one can see um, when I'm wearing it so yeah I really enjoyed having that one on it's nice and comfy um, so perfect for day lounging at the spa so yeah that is what I was wearing yesterday and then today I'm back in normal clothes um, and I've got on a dress that I think I made maybe a couple of summers ago or maybe it was last summer. But I really love this dress actually, I love the print on this one. This dress is this pattern here, um, which is the Lotta dress pattern by Tilly the Buttons, which is another of their sewing patterns for beginners and it's another one that comes together really nicely and sews up fairly swiftly too. I'll show you the line drawings on the Lotta one. Oh, I mentioned the size range too on this one. Um, it's not available at the moment in Tilly the Buttons full size range. So at the moment it goes from a UK 6 up to a UK 24, which takes you up to a bust of 48 inches. But yeah, here is the Lotta dress. So the dress has quite a blousy bodice um, with this neckline that you can just pull over your head. It's wide enough so you don't need any sort of fastenings there. And you can either make it as this short sleeve version with these grown on sleeves or you can add on sleeves tent to a long sleeve version. And then it's gathered in at the waist with a little elastic channel and then it goes out into quite a full swishy skirt which you can make either as like a knee length or a midi length. And you can add on these patch pockets as well if you so wish. Um, and I think a lot of actually you can make in jersey or woven fabric which is pretty cool. I've never actually tried it in a jersey fabric I can imagine it would work really well. I think the, um, there's some differences in the instructions. I think if you make it in jersey, there's possibly a neckband piece to pop on. Whereas if you make it in woven like this one, um, you, you make a facing. Although actually on my version, I switched out the a facing and made um, bias binding instead, just because I, I, I prefer that finish. I find it, it sort of lasts better than a facing does. And I find it irons better because you have that sort of facing flopping around the inside. So it's just my preference. But yeah, although you can make it in woven and in jersey, I think this pattern worked really well, especially in quite a drapey, swishy woven fabric. And the version I'm wearing today, I made in this lovely viscose fabric. It's really nice, lightweight, floaty viscose. This one came from Rainbow Fabrics a couple of years back. And um, I remember seeing it and just thought the print was really pretty and I really like the colours. So it's like this ditzy floral. I think the base is like a dark navy colour. But it doesn't really look navy, it looks more of like a lilac-y purple colour, I think, because of all the different flowers. It's got um, lilacs and pinks um, all over it. And I just really like the print, I thought it was a really pretty one. And it's lovely, lightweight, floaty viscose. This full skirt moves really nicely. On the less, a lot of dress when I'm walking around the house, I find. So as you can see, I made the short sleeve version. I'll stand up a bit, you can see it's got the elastic channel. And I actually um, added in 
inseam pockets. I think I just borrowed a pocket pattern piece from another pattern and added those in because I never think like a patch pocket works so well in quite a drapey fabric like a viscose. I think if I tried to use the pocket it would just fall out of shape quite quickly and drag the skirt down a bit but I do quite like having pockets so I added in inseam ones which seem to work fine. And then I made mine in like a just above the knee length. Um, in terms of sizing, I think I went for a straight size two on this one. Let me have a look at the size chart for a moment. Yeah, my measurements would put me as a size two, which is a UK eight, on the bust and the waist, and then slightly larger than that on the hip, somewhere between a size two and a size three. But it does say on the pattern, don't worry about your hip measurement, because there's plenty of room in the flared skirt. So yeah, I went for a straight size two, and I like the fit. This dress, I don't think it's designed to be oversized. It's designed to be a little bit blousy in the bodice, which you can see. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's quite fitted because it sort of nips in around your waist with the elastic. So it's quite a nice, comfy one to wear. I think I might have made a slight forward shoulder adjustment on this one. Because I think when I made my first Lotta dress, I felt it was sort of falling backwards a little bit. So I think this is my second version. And I think I might have just brought the shoulders slightly forward, which now sits a bit more comfortably around there. It's a really, really nice, easy one to wear and quite an easy one to throw on. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just quite a nice, comfortable, relaxed day dress. And I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on today. Um, I'm going out for a walk with a friend a bit later, so I'll probably pop it on with a pair of trainers maybe a denim jacket but I'm not sure actually I'll need it because it looks really warm out there definitely need a bit of sunscreen this morning before I go out so yeah that is what I'm wearing today and that is the final day of this week so as ever it seems like it's gone really fast but I hope you've enjoyed hearing about what I've been wearing this week um yeah I really like poppy on every day actually it does really encourage me to reach for different things I know I say that every time it does really encourage me to yeah just pull out some different things in my wardrobe that I haven't had on for a while and that's been extra easy this week because it's been so much warmer than it's been for ages. So yeah, thanks so much for joining me for another week of my handmade wardrobe. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you to all my sort of regular viewers for watching and commenting as ever. I really appreciate it. And also thank you if you're new to my channel for checking it out. Please do subscribe and press the bell icon too, which means you'll be notified of my future videos. Next weekend, I am planning to release a makes video sharing um, all of my recent sewing makes. So yeah, keep an eye out for that one coming next weekend. But in the meantime, I hope you have a lovely week. I hope there's been a bit of sunshine where you are too. And yeah, see you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.